Well, the basic idea would be that, you know, MMT is trying to build a better mousetrap. I think that's the way to think about it. So right now what we do is we have the Federal Reserve uh, trying to fight inflation by creating unemployment. That's how the Fed fights inflation. And what MMT would do is actually use full employment to fight inflation. And so you'd get a full employment economy and a better uh, price anchor, a better, um, a better inflation uh, outcome. So how, do you, how do you use full employment to fight inflation when, when usually one of the key drivers of inflation that is associated with full employment is rising wages? So what we would do is establish effectively a public option in the labor market. So instead of having millions and millions of people locked out of employment who actually want to weigh in, who want to participate, who want to contribute, we would allow them to come in. We would guarantee employment at a fixed wage. We would say $15 an hour. And those people come in, and now what you have is a, is a pool of employed people. They're working. They have skills. They're employable. And so instead of having employers compete for people who are already working when they want to hire up in a, in a strong economy, uh, they don't have to bid wages up trying to compete with one another. For employed workers, they can hire from this pool, this ready pool of skilled workers who are employed in public service jobs. Stephanie, when people say that uh, this means deficits don't matter, do you agree with them? Is that the goal that you could use the, so this would only work in countries that have their own printing press. Um, it would be a way of saying, you know, there's no worry about running deficits or tapping out uh, revenues or anything like that. Um, you simply use the printing press to expand. Is that right? Well, I wouldn't use the language of a printing press. It's sort of gold standard uh, language. What it does is say, so if you've got a, a system that's built so that the stabilizers are in place, and that's what the job guarantee would do. It would turbocharge the automatic stabilizers, actually making the Fed's job much easier because you're building full employment into the economic system. You're anchoring the wage, which is a price anchor by uh, the government deciding what it's going to pay those workers in that program. And then the budget becomes responsive. So as the economy goes into a downturn, you automatically catch these people. Instead of allowing them to become unemployed and all the waste that's associated with unemployment, they find work. It helps to stabilize the downturn and then in the recovery the government automatically spends less as people transition into private sector jobs and so the government's budget has to be responsive but it's certainly not a way of saying that you get unlimited deficit spending it, it you, controls yeah. itself you as the economy goes through the business cycle here's mm -hmm. senator purdue uh, from georgia who asked since we we're talking about the fed uh, he asked chair powell about this uh, during his testimony earlier this week let's take a quick listen the idea that deficits don't matter for countries that can borrow in their own currency, I think, is just wrong. Uh, I think U.S. debt is fairly high at a level of, of GDP, and much more importantly than that, it's, it's growing faster than GDP, fairly significantly faster. And as you respond to that, Stephanie, I also wonder, could we even have this uh, discussion if interest rates weren't so low? I, I can't imagine this taking place in the late 1970s or early 80s. Uh, when you had, you know, double-digit borrowing costs and, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, but that was precisely the time that you had deficits exploding under Reagan and the debt nearly tripling. And so you had that combination of exactly what you just described, very high interest rate environment, deficits increasing, the debt-to-GDP ratio increasing, and what happened? Nothing, right? We moved to an era of higher growth eventually. The ratio began to come down. And so I, I don't think, I think that, you know, what Chairman Powell is, is saying when he says, I, I don't believe that it's true that deficits don't matter. Well, neither do I. Deficits do matter, but they don't matter in the ways that we've been conventionally thinking about them. And the way we usually think about a deficit is that it's evidence of excessive spending. And that's just wrong. Evidence of excessive spending is inflation. So I would argue you don't have a deficit problem or a debt problem unless you have an inflation problem.